My name is Elizabeth, your host for today's Zone 7 Gardening Present. These Zone 7 gar Gardening Virtual Plant Clinic series highlight native and other plants suited to grow well in our Mid-Atlantic USDA Hardiness Zone 7 Gardens. These series of clinics are sponsored by the Virginia Cooperative Extension Program of Virginia's two land-grant universities, Virginia Tech and Virginia State University. We will begin with what's blooming now. And Barbara will share with us what is currently blooming in our Zone 7 gardens. Zigzag Goldenrod, a seasonal favorite you can see everywhere at this time of year. Over to you, Barbara. Thank you. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about Solidago flexicollis and a little bit about this plant. So this plant is called the zigzag goldenrod because the thin wiry stem zigs and zags back and forth, which you can see on the right side here uh, in this photo. And it changes the direction at each node. So the node is the leaf attachment point. This plant is in the aster family and in the goldenrod genus. genus. Its natural range is colored on the left-hand side there. It's from Quebec and Ontario in Canada down to Louisiana in the Southern US. It's very common in the mountains uh, in Virginia. It's infrequent in the Piedmont area of the state and it's pretty rare and restricted to certain areas in our coastal plain. Zigzag goldenrod is a one to three foot tall perennial. It's very low maintenance and it's a moderate grower. So it's not very aggressive. One thing that I found interesting is that it propagates by root or seed. The seed spreads by light hairs when I was really trying to find a photo of that, but I couldn't find one, um, but it sounded really interesting. So Solidago flexicollis is the most shade tolerant of all goldenrods. It prefers medium to dry and well-drained soil, but it will tolerate sandy and clay soils. It has also been found to tolerate the toxic secretions of black walnut trees, and it's hardy in zones three through eight, which covers its natural range that we spoke about in the last slide. Zigzag goldenrod has broad, coarse leaves and they have serrated edges. And it has these spike-like flower clusters that you can see in the left-hand picture on this slide. These spiky clusters and its growth and partial shade help distinguish this species from other goldenrods that you might see. Zigzag goldenrod flowers August, through October. So you can see this now in our area. The flower is a brilliant yellow with the flowers in small clusters where the leaves attach to the stem. Leaves attached to the stem. Now that we know a bit about its habitat and blooms, let's talk about the benefits to wildlife or insects and pollinators. So Solidago flexicollis has many benefits which I've grouped into three areas here. As I mentioned before, it can also tolerate part shade, so it really is well suited for a variety of conservation uses. It's well suited for rain gardens, biofiltration plantings, native gardens, slope stabil stabilizations, and deciduous forest restorations. Its predictable late summer blooms add lots of interest, color, and texture to any area. For wildlife, Solidago flexicollis flowers attract and serve bees, butterflies, and even flies and wasps. And the seeds are consumed by pine siskins, they kind of look like a goldfinch, and swamp sparrows. And the foliage can tolerate deer browsing. Sol Solidago flexicollis also has some ethnobotanical uses. I did find some citations that Native Americans and other people across the globe use the roots and leaves for medicinal uses, which may explain the origin of the name, which means to make whole. And finally, I'll leave you with something that all of us allergy sufferers might be interested in. Goldenrods in general are accused of causing lots of allergies. However, allergic reactions at the time of the goldenrod bloom are actually caused by other plants that bloom at the same time, such as common ragweed and many different grasses. So don't blame the showy Solidago flexicollis on your next allergy attack. And instead you may think about using this pretty plant somewhere on your property for one of its many uses. And with that, here are my references for the presentation, and that is what I have for you today. Thank you, Barbara. A goldenrod is so prolific during September, and now we know what it is. Moving on. September is a very busy month in your garden. 
And so here are a few tips that will help you prioritize your work and um, get the most out of what's left of our lingering summer. You want to plant your winter salad, plant hardy greens outside and others in a cold frame. Harvest your lettuce crop that you might have planted in August. Harvest your, your herbs before frost. Wash thoroughly, dry, and store in a freezer bag and freeze for later use. Fertilize your lawn. Divide crowded perennials and replant where there's more space. And then you have the big job of cleaning up the garden, removing the dead plants, the debris, and the weeds. You want to prune your evergreen, tree, evergreen trees and shrubs. And then as your reward, plant pansies in full for color in the cooler months. You may want to check out the Fairfax Gardening website. It's the, the um, URL is circled and you, you can subscribe by email to receive notices when our site is updated. Follow us on Instagram. Fairfax Master Gardeners has a YouTube, YouTube channel, BCE Fairfax County YouTube in your browser. We have held these inf informative sessions going into our second year and we've been recording them. Check out past presentations from our virtual plant clinics on the BCE Fairfax County YouTube website. Thank you for attending and happy gardening. Hope to see you again at a future plant clinic as we talk about seasonal gardening topics.